In this video, we're going to determine the flexural tensile strength of a concrete beam. The relevant standard is NZS 3112 Part 2, and determining the flexural tensile strength of the concrete beam is described in Section 7. You should note that the standard specifies in detail in Section 5 how the specimens are moulded and cured for subsequent testing. To conduct the test, in addition to the test machine itself, you'll need a ruler and a marker. You'll also need to record the results of the test in your company's quality control system. Retrieve the beam from the curing tank. Note the water will be extremely alkaline and both eye and hand protection are required for safe handling. The tests are done with the beam in a saturated surface dry condition, so wipe off the excess moisture and keep the beam covered with a damp cloth when not in use. The first thing to note before doing anything else is to look at the general condition of the test specimen. We're looking to see large voids and obvious defects. A test performed on a grossly defective specimen will not be accurate. Mark the bottom of the lower face load bearings as a positioning aid. Ensure the correct health and safety procedures are followed and increase the load on the test specimen at a rate of 1 to 2 megapascals per minute. Note that this rate is about a tenth of the rate used when doing a compression test and this reflects that the tensile strength of concrete is around a tenth of the compression strength. Note that also that the position of the upper face load bearings with respect to the specimen are positioned over a span at least three times and not more than four times its depth. Take two measurements either side of the fracture of the width and depth of the beam to the nearest one millimetre. Determine the location of the fracture relative to the length of the beam. Note whether the fracture occurs in one of three places. In the middle third of the test span, outside the middle third but at a distance less than 5% of the span length, and outside of the middle third at a distance greater than 5% of the span length. Where the failure occurs in the beam determines which, if any, formula is used to determine the flexural strength. It is important to note that if the fracture occurs outside of the middle third by more than 5% of the span length, the test is discarded. The maximum of load applied in newtons, which is then used to calculate the flexural tensile strength. See section 7.5 of the standard for the calculation to use. Record the flexural tensile strength to the nearest 0.2 megapascals. Seacans would like to thank the crew at Holson Bombay for their time and the use of their facilities.